The following data represents the number of flying geese sighted on each day of a 13-day tour of England. Now this is the flying geese and these are the sightings of geese that was observed in 13 days when someone went to England. So you want to answer these questions. Now to answer uh, these questions, let us first order the data from the lowest to the highest. So ordering, so the ordering of the data. So let's order the data. Okay, so ordering the data. So let's start from the lowest to the highest. So I think you can do that yourself. This is, you've got two ones, you've got two twos, you got how many threes? You got two threes. How many fours? You got three fours. One, two, three fours. How many fives? You got one five, one six, one seven, and an eighteen. So let's count. There should be thirteen. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay. So let's answer this question, the lowest, the minimum, and the maximum. So this is your minimum, very obvious. This is your minimum value, and this is your maximum. Okay, the next thing is we need to find the median. So median is the middle of the data. So median, so let me write it here so that all on one page. The median is the middle of the data. So there are 13 values. So there's a formula for median which is like this, which is n plus 1 over 2 or second to value. I'll explain what I mean. n stands for the number of values. So here you've got 13 data, 13 values. So you put 13 in place of n, that is 13 plus 1 divided by second value. Okay, so here you've got an odd number of values. You'll have one value exactly in the middle. So this is 14 divided by 2, which is the seventh value from the left or from the right. Doesn't matter. So seventh value is the middle value. So let's count the seventh value. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 4 is the median value. So 4 is the median. So what, what's the function of median? Median divides the data into two equal parts. You can say there are 50% of the data to the left and 50% of the data to the right. Okay, that's one thing that you should understand, that median is something that divides the data equal into two equal parts. So this is, I call the lower half, let's call this the lower half, and this the upper half. Okay, so this is the lower half, and this is the upper half, and this is the middle. Okay, so we have done that. Now the mean, mean is average. So you know how to find average. Av mean is total, total of values. I'll write only total divided by 13. Okay, so I think you can do that. I already got the answer, which is 4.62 into DP. Okay, so I wanted to look at mean and median and think about why mean is also an average which should also which is also reflecting a value which is in the middle so mean is somewhere here okay so mean is somewhere here mean is between four and five so mean is sitting here somewhere here so this is your mean so you can say mean is greater than the median that's one thing that you should observe mean is greater than the median. Why do you think ideally mean and median should be almost the same? Not it cannot be same always, but there should not be a huge difference between mean and median. So I wanted to think why mean is greater than median. Okay. The next question is the lower, the upper and the lower quartiles. Quartiles has come from the word quarter. Okay, quarter, I hope you know, is 1 out of 4 or 25%. Okay, quarter is quarter is 1 out of 4 or that is 25%. So median 
in other words you can say it is the 50th uh, percentage okay or you can say 50 percent is to the left and 50 percent is to the right a quarter the upper court will the upper quarter is the middle so let me write that so let's the upper quarter upper quartile not quarter upper quartile upper quartile is half of the upper half is half or halfway halfway of the upper half of the upper half so as I told you this is your upper half and this is your lower half so you want to find the halfway between of the upper half so you've got one two three four five six in the upper half so what will be the median here so the the halfway would be between these two values okay can you see the, this me this is your upper quartile which is halfway of the upper half so so if you want to go halfway between five and six i think you can understand this is five plus six so divide by two if you want to find halfway between 5 and 6, which is 5 plus 6 divided by 2, which is 11 divided by 2, which is 5.5. You could have done this without a calculator, uh, without doing this process. Just by looking at this, you can say halfway would be between 5 and 6, which is 5.5. Now, your lower quartile, your lower quartile, can you think of the definition of a lower quartile? So if the upper quartile is halfway of the upper half, lower quartile would be halfway of lower half. It's very logical. It's very simple. To, if you understand the logic, it's very simple. It is the halfway of the lower half. So this is your lower half, and you want to find halfway between the lower half. So, well, this is halfway between the lower half. So what is half? halfway between 2 and 2. That is 2. But let's do the math. So this is 2 plus 2 divided by 2. Which is 4 divided by 2, which is 2. You don't need to do this, but this is just to explain how to uh, find the lower half when you have different numbers, where you have to add and divide by 2. That's how you find the lower and upper quartiles. So the next is interquartile range, IQR. IQR is an abbreviation for interquartile range. Interquartile range. Interquartile range is the difference between the upper quartile and the lower quartile. So this is a formula which is U, UQ stands for the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. My Q looks a bit funny. This is upper quartile minus lower quartile. So your upper quartile is 5.5, take away 2, which is 3.5. So I want you to think about this value, which is very important. So here, uh, let me draw a box so that you understand the. Uh, so you have two. This is, uh, let me draw. This gives you, this is say your lower quartile. This is your lower quartile. So this is your lower quartile. This is your median and this is your upper quartile. Can you visualize and see? Th this is the difference between, oh, so this is UQ, not LQ. This is UQ. UQ is the upper quartile and LQ is the lower quartile. So this is the range the upper quartile minus lower quartile will give you the range so the interquartile range gives you fifth the middle 50 percent of the data this interquartile range gives the middle 50 percent of the data the middle 50 percent of the data so what does that mean so you can say that from this, you can say the fifth, middle 50% of the data is between 2 and 5.5, or between 2 and 5. Okay, mathematically, 5.5 is statistically at 5.5 does make sense. So you can say fifth, the middle 50% of the observation comes between 2 and 5, at 5.5. Okay, and you can say 
this is this is 25 percent to the left this is 25 percent okay so you can say 25 percent of the data is less than lower quartile and 25 percent of the data is more than upper quartile so you need to talk in terms of percentages 25 percent is more than upper quartile 25 percent is less than lower quartile and 50 percent is between the lower quartile and upper quartile so the next question is are there any extreme values from this data can you see any extreme values obviously 18 is clearly an extreme value okay this is away from most of the data so 18 seems to be an extreme value okay and write two sentences about the data based on the stats you have calculated so one thing that you can say is mean is greater than median mean is affected by extreme values and it is probably because of 18 that the mean is 4.6 and the median is 4 because mean uh, considers all the data but whereas median is not affected by extreme value and the second thing that you can say is most of the data is between 2 and 5 most of the sightings is between 2 and 5 gaze